So Curtis, what brought you to Story Expo 2014? Uh, a friend of mine did it before, the, the expo before, and uh, I've been to two, three other pitch fests, and he said this one would be different. And, and he's right, it's, it's been different so far. So, and you flew out from? Flew out from South Carolina. Okay. And uh, you know, I, I maintain a place here only because if a meeting happens that I need to go to, I can just hop on the plane and have a place here. Uh, and that's happened quite a few times. But Oh, it has. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so do you drop everything and fly you out? I drop there? everything. Uh, I teach, so I, I have an assistant. I take over my class and I hop on a plane. So. Nice. What do you yeah. teach? Criminal justice. Okay. Criminal justice. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, I, law enforcement, retired, so it, I went to get my little certificate and felt like it'd be a great thing to do. So mm -hmm. love it, love it. So the story that you came to pitch today, mm -hmm. how long have you been working on this idea? I started, I uh, wrote a book and it came out in 01, called Juvenile Justice 101, and uh, toured for a year on the book. And I really wrote that book just for people in the industry, that, that in my field, uh, because, you know, dealing with juvenile crime is a lot different than dealing with adult crime. Uh, you arrest a kid, it's different. So it ended up being a novel that touched a whole bunch of other people besides workers in the, in the juvenile world. And so I uh, went to Long Beach to, to speak at a conference and then this producer asked me to, to write a screenplay and send it to her and I did. And they ended up optioning the screenplay. Uh, nothing became of that, which is why I'm here because I redid everything and at risk is what it's called now. So, oh, wow. yeah. How many times have you rewritten this? I have probably rewritten this one maybe seven times. Seven times, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I left out a lot of the things that, uh, you know, when you're dealing with kids, you know, unlike adults, you become closer to these families because it's not just the kids you, you have detained, it's the family. So I lost eight kids during that, that either murdered or was murdered um, during my, my tenure with the prosecutor's office. So I had to go back and put some of those things in because I couldn't really deal with them. They were too fresh. And so that's probably why, I, yeah, seven now. I've rewritten it, rewritten it seven times. Wow. Yeah, uh, and I gotta say that the reason I actually do this is because I met my brother when he was 12. Never even knew I had a brother. Um, and my dad said, hey, here's, here's your brother. And uh, he was already in the gang, 12 years old. He ran the whole neighborhood. <clears throat> He's on trial now for murder. He murdered his girlfriend last year. Um, but he told me, after he read my book, I, I dedicated the book to him, and uh, he said, you know, you've got to do this show. Uh, this is my life. He went to juvenile uh, detention when he was 13. He's 33 now. He's been in jail the whole time. <clears throat> so that's why that's my number one project. Right. Uh, because I want to see a TV series dedicated to just juvenile crime. Uh, the story is just crazy. So. so that's been the driving force for you is this, this personal thing yeah. and knowing these also these different people that have oh, since yeah. passed away. Oh, yeah. So it's not just yeah. you're hoping to get a deal and walk away. Yeah, it's way more than that. Yeah. Way more than that for me. Uh, you know, if, if it were just to get a deal, I would have stopped a long time ago. Uh, Why? Because I, I feel like, uh, you know, if it was for the money, you know, Hollywood's a different animal to deal with, you know. And not that I can't take rejection, but usually, as my wife tells me, um, I don't have patience for that, you know. Um, so if someone says no a few times, I'll just say, okay, I'll do something else. I don't take it personal. But this one, uh, I have to stick with. Uh, my paralegal at the time, uh, a year before I left, uh, Liz, she said, uh, you know, there's no way you can stop this until a TV show happens because we lost a great kid that year. Um, he got out of a gang. We got him into an alternative school. He was literally walking to school that day and got gunned down. Uh, his first day of school uh, in Florence, South Carolina, just outside of Myrtle Beach. And that kid, for the whole summer, did community service, did whatever. And he said, Mr. Ray, please keep me in this community service thing, because if I go home to the neighborhood, they're going to get me. <clears throat> so work me during the daytime. He begged. He, he rode his bike five miles just to come downtown to work in the uh, city center. And uh, his first day of school, they killed him because of something he did the year prior. So, so those are the stories that I, uh, I, have to, I have to keep this going. You know? um, 
And when I pitch, uh, of course, I use that because it's real. Um, you can't make them up. Has anyone ever told you to tone down the violence because it's, oh, it's too much? Yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, it's funny you say that. Uh, a couple of years ago, my manager and I, and uh, my former manager, and uh, he said, before you go in, I got to tell you something. They shot me some notes. And he said, you know, I don't know how to tell you this, but they think it's going to be a black thing. And uh, they think it's too violent. We don't want any gang stuff and all that. And I said, well, they haven't read my book, you know, uh, because in my book, I have people from all walks. I had, before Columbine, I dealt with a kid who threatened to blow up his school. Uh, and he had, his family was, was rich, you know, he had two doctors, and he had a lab downstairs in the basement, and he could have done it. Um, so it's not about just the gangs and about black kids in the neighborhood. Uh, someone said to me at pretty much before that same thing happened that this needs to be a wire thing. It'll happen, you know, if, if it's a wire thing. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not in this to redo the wire or a black, white thing. Crime reaches across all colors, nationalities, you know, uh, crime has no color. And so when I write, I write for everyone. I have kids selling pills in, in rich neighborhoods, boxes of pills. They have pill parties. Their parents drive Jags, they're doctors and lawyers. They, they didn't see it that way. So, you know, they thought it was going to be a black thing. So those are the kind of the walls you run into. Right. Yeah. But you still keep going. Still keep going. Yeah, yeah. There's, um, there's many reasons, many people. Yeah, many people. Uh, one girl gave me her high school diploma. Uh, I got her out of an alternative. I got her out of a regular high school and got her into an alternative school. Had no idea that she was graduating valedictorian. And her mom kept calling me one day and said, hey, can you make her graduation? She really wants you there. And I said, well, sure, you know, I didn't think anything about it. But when I got there, she started talking about this guy that she took a knife to school. Gorgeous girl, green eyes, you know, really light skin from her. She was mixed, you know, and everybody hated her at school, the girls, because she was pretty and all the boys liked her. She took a knife to school to protect herself. And that's how I got her. Well, anyway, her name is Jonisi. And so Joe uh, got up gave her valedictorian speech and was talking about this guy and her mom elbows me and starts smiling. She's talking about you. I said, what? Well, I had gotten her into the alternative school because my high school uh, girlfriend was the guidance counselor at that school. I called Joey up and she got her in. Nobody would take her. And she was a straight A student. So, and now she's married with kids and doing well. So, so these, these are the things that, you know, I did it so long, so I have probably more stories than most. Mm -hmm. um, but those are the reasons why I got to keep going, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So she gave me a high school diploma. It's on my wall at home. So, yeah.